It's been a week of red flags on the economy, and now the president has tossed a hand grenade into the stock market. This started with China announcing retaliation tariffs on everything from coffee to car parts to wheat and whiskey. The markets took the news pretty well, but a short time ago, President Trump tweeted his anger at China, saying things like, we don't need China, and urging American companies to look elsewhere for trade partners. The market reacted dramatically to that. Now, remember that this is all coming just as the president prepares to leave the country this evening. He is heading to France for the G7 summit, where testy relations and fresh disagreements with top U.S. allies will be on full display. The president also tweeting that he will be responding to China's tariffs this afternoon, so we should be expecting that at any moment, and we'll bring that to you. Allison Kosick is our business correspondent. She's in New York, and Abby Phillip is at the White House. And I want to start with you, Abby. Um, who's the president meeting with right now? Well, Brianna, the president is meeting at the White House right now with his trade team as they scramble to figure out how exactly they will respond uh, to this announcement that China is going to slap new tariffs on American goods. Now, now the president has been talking pretty tough on social media all morning, uh, basically saying that he wants the United States and their companies to move away from using China. He's saying he's ordered American companies to find other trading partners, but it's not clear that he even has the power to do that. That. The president also says the United States doesn't need China, uh, but you know I think markets, based on what they're doing right now, will probably disagree with that. And as all of this is happening, Brianna, President Trump continues to attack the Fed Chairman Jay Powell, implying in a tweet this morning that he's not sure who is our enemy, whether it is Jay Powell or Xi Jinping of China. So a lot of tough words from President Trump. But as of right now, we still don't have any indication of when President Trump might speak and what he might say. Will he give an actual statement and will that that be a statement that calms markets or continues to roil them? Uh, based on his tweets this morning, it seems that President Trump is in a fighting mood, Brianna. All right, Abby, thanks so much. And Allison, let's take a look at the Dow because right now it's down nearly 500 points. Um, how quickly did the market start responding to the president's tweets? Oh, it was almost immediately, Brianna. Right now, actually, stocks are at session lows, or at least close to them. And we did see the markets react in tandem every time President Trump you know, put out yet another tweet and another tweet in his, in his really massive and stunning tweet storm today. The one that really is rattling the markets is the part about uh, what President Trump is going to do in response to the retaliation uh, from the from the new China tariffs against U.S. imports. That is what the market is waiting on. That is what investors are telling me is the wild card here. And it's that uncertainty that's causing the sell off that you're seeing. And you know how much the market hates uncertainty. And that's exactly what this trade war is, is breeding is, is more and more uncertainty because it's growing more and more intense. And that is why we are seeing the sell off today. In addition, the tweet uh, against Fed Chief Jay Powell, certainly not helping. The expectation that the president had that Fed Chief Jay Powell was going to go ahead and make some sort of rate decision or announce some sort of coming rate decision, that rattled the market too because it's unusual for that expectation to even be there because historically uh, the Fed doesn't make rate decisions at that uh, Wyoming meeting that is going on this afternoon. They wait for their for their actual meeting, which is happening, uh, the next one happening September 17th and 18th, when there is an expectation that the Fed will move on rates in some way. Uh, but it's rattling the market to see the president get so upset at the Fed chief that he didn't take action today, which would be historically odd, to say the least. Brianna? To say the least, um, Allison. And, and Abby, back to you. Do we have any indication before this tweet from the president that he was planning to announce anything about China today? No, Brianna. His schedule was almost virtually clear, save for a lunch midday that he had uh, with the Secretary of State before he leaves tonight at around uh, 10 p.m. for the G7, where he's going to be in France. So the president had a completely open schedule today, uh, and there was no indication, even as we speak right now, there is no indication from the White House about what form the president's comments might take. Will he actually speak to reporters? Will he be in a venue where he might be able to take questions? Or will they try to release some kind 
kind of paper statement. I think there's a really big distinction between those two things because if President Trump is the one uh, using his own platform to say something about this, uh, will he be on script? Will he go off script? Uh, and can the White House really uh, expect that whatever he says will not make matters worse, as Allison has just been describing? Uh, you know, investors clearly have been hanging on every word President Trump is saying. Uh, will he actually appear before cameras today is, is very much an open question. All right, Abby, thank you so much. Allison, thank you. Austin Goolsby was chairman of President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors. He's currently an economics professor at the University of Chicago's Business School, and he's joining us along with Maya McGinnis, the president of the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Okay, so Austin, Jerome Powell not mentioning anything about rate cuts, no hints at all. We heard Allison explain maybe why, but considering this environment right now, what do you make of this? I mean, the, the president of the United States tweeted out that the head of the Fed, a man he appointed, is an enemy of the state. I, I mean, let's just take a step back. Nothing like this has ever happened in U.S. economic history. It's crazy. And it's, it's not even the lead story. So uh, I, I think everybody should just take a pause here and recognize this is uncharted territory and this is not a comfortable place for us to be. Yeah, he, he put out a tweet uh, basically saying, who is more a foe of the U.S.? Is it Xi Jinping or is it the Fed chairman? Uh, keeping that in mind and knowing that the Fed chairman, Maya, is in a weird place because he's got this incoming from the president that a Fed chairman doesn't normally have, what are his options? Yeah, this is unchartered, both kind of politically, having your own president uh, being very aggressive in the face of the Fed chair, and also what's going on in the economy structurally. So we are going through major shifts in the economy um, after a very long expansion. It is not unlikely we'll head into a recession. But at the same time, we're seeing different things going on in terms of inflation and interest rates than we normally would have expected. So the Fed is balancing a lot of different things to try to work out. And then to have the president both being very aggressive, but also creating an incredible amount of uncertainty because of the interactions with China. So we never know what's going to happen from day to day in terms of these negotiations. But we do know, I guess one piece of certainty is that this trade war and these tariffs are going to decrease economic growth. We've already seen that they're probably going to bring growth down by a couple percentages of a point, point a couple tenths of a percentage point. So the Fed is having to balance um, what it wants to do if we go into a recession preemptively from a recession, um, and changes in the political and policy environment day to day. I don't think anybody's been juggling this many balls when the economy wasn't in a recession before. There's a lot to, to manage. The president's uh, opinion isn't really supposed to sway the Fed chairman, Austin, but is it, is it possible for him to keep that out of his mind as he goes about his, his work? I don't know. I think the irony here is the more the president publicly says, do as I say, the more the, Fed, the Federal Open Market Committee and Jay Powell in particular kind of have to resist a little. Otherwise, the world looks and says, wait a minute, is the president dictating what's, what's happening? If we get it, I mean, it, it seems like we're going into full-blown escalating trade war with China. And it kind of feels like, you remember the scene in Star Wars where they're throwing down the trash compactor? And, and he says, uh, well, you know, it could be worse. And then you hear some awful sound. And Han Solo says, it's worse. This is worse. We had uncertainty, but now we have outright damage. And the Chinese have been trying to de-escalate the situation. Now it seems like they're angry and they're going to they're gonna escalate. And then President Trump is going to escalate back. And you can only think they're going to escalate again. And that's why the market is doing what it's doing. And it's in the context that we're already teetering on the edge of recession. So I, I got to say, I, I'm, I'm pretty nervous for this moment for us. And thank you for the Star Wars analogy, because that always makes things uh, more clear for sure. Um, so I wonder when you look at this, uh, this tweet of the president's, he said uh, the hereby order tweet, uh, and he, he's saying that, that actually uh, American businesses should find other uh, places besides China to buy products. Yeah. I, I, my question is, and I think we've seen this when it comes to agriculture too, even as he's 
um, buoying the uh, farmers who should be selling products to China, there's a destruction of their market share. This is something that they build over decades. This is something you don't just replace once things cool down a little bit between the U.S. and China, and we're seeing uh, businesses respond kind of saying, what? This isn't how we do things. What do you think about the president saying that? Yeah, and again, it's back to certainty, that certainty is the cheapest kind of stimulus that there is to strengthen an economy. And we have the opposite of that right now. So listen, I think, and many people think, I believe that it was right to take on China for a number of issues, from unfair trade practices to security threats to, to theft of intellectual property. So this is not something we should be ignoring. But you need a strategy, and you need objectives, and you need transparency about what you're trying to accomplish. And yet we have a president who's negotiating strategy is chaos and don't let anybody understand what's happening. So that in, in no way enables U.S. industry and business to make the longer term decisions which they need. They need to have an environment where they can make investment decisions, production decisions that are based on some sense of where the economy is heading. They have the opposite. That's going to freeze a lot of the components of the economy that we need to keep growth going right now.